Hi everybody, this is Kevin and today, as everybody can see, we've got Kim Murden with us and we're going to, I'm going to do a Zoom chat with Kim to find out a little bit about herself, where she comes from, and all that sort of thing as I do, you do my Zoom chats. So hi Kim, how are you? I'm very well today, thank you Kevin. Um, yeah, I've been out, been out in the garden so I'm always happier when I'm out well, there. I think everybody is once they've been out in the garden it's uh it's so relaxing and uh you know you just forget about everything that's going on absolutely yeah so kim tell tell everybody where you have you always lived are you i think you're in, based in lewis aren't you i'm based in lewis um been actually where i am now for the last five years mm -hmm. um and although i'm quite a home person i have moved around rather too much um so oh, right. before I was in New Zealand for five years. Mm -hmm. um, before that, most most of my adult life, I've been in Sussex, um, around and about Lewis. I mean, since the first, actually no, this is the second time I actually lived right went right in Lewis. Mm -hmm. um, I've lived around Furl, Beddingham, uh, Spithurst, Barkham. So, all, as I say, on the outskirts, I've had a brief sojourn up on the edge of the Yorkshire Moors, way oh. back. Um, oh. But yeah, originally I'm a Surrey girl. I was born in. Um, Red Hill, Rygate oh, wow. and Red Hill, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, on, on the Sandstone, but you're mm. near the North Downs and now I'm at home on the South Downs. So yeah, here I am. Excellent. And, and t just tell me what, you obviously that's where you started off, Red Hill, but, and your obviously your parents were there. So what, what did they do as, as professions? I know, I know what you do and we'll yeah. say about that in a minute. So is there any relationship between your, your, what you do for a living and what your parents did well that's a very good question um not directly my mum mm. has done many many things of course most important being a, a, a mother and she's always worked alongside that doing all sorts from accountancy avon lady um mm. but what i did get from her very early on she uh, was a you know, love of outside and used to you know as a young child used to press flowers and things so that's maybe yeah. a little my dad, he used, again, he, um, you know, they both grew up during the war time and then he, you know, was in the, um, you know, national service and he went off to university, you know, the, that special university they did. Um, and so he's had a, a career in engineering and he was very involved in designing carbon fibre. Actually. Oh right, okay. Yeah. Oh, right. So, wow. Uber. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so mining engineer and then into into that. So yeah, but so no no linkage. But I think come from a long line of people um, who've probably just worked the land. And right. I was looking back. You're like this, Kevin. I have I do have halls in my family. Really. Um, that we might be related. You never know. Well, <laughs> my, I, I I did a did a bit of genealogy and we managed to trace the hall line of the family back to northampton oh okay so, um to a place called wappenham that's a good name oh no wappenham. Good. yeah and then and then somewhere called stoke bruin um, right which is not that far from wappenham um but interestingly my hang on let me get this right my mother's my uh, sorry my ex mother-in-law her maiden name was also Hall oh, but wow. came from um, Rochdale I think oh okay okay so yes no our, our halls were well that as far as back as got in Oxford and e the Vale of Evesham and one of them way back was a yeoman farmer Oxford now yeah. that's that's not somewhere lo like Hook, Hook Norton was it um it was one of those <laughs> i have to go and look it up for you <laughs> because hook hook norton is in my family tree um ah. or the village of um william hall married Anne phipps um i can't remember what year it was but they they were based around um hook norton Okay, so, oh, I should, I, it's a while since I've looked at it. It's one of those winter jobs I keep, you know, going, go and do something really meaningful and get off Facebook, for example, and go and do my genealogy. Again, that's it, yeah. Stage. But the trouble is with genealogy is, is if once you start it, it be, you, you become a little bit obsessed with it. Yes. And that's what happened to myself and my cousin for about six years. Six years, and, okay. 
Yeah, um, and <laughs> we visited so many graveyards and so many registry offices and places like that. But we loved it. It was great fun yeah. trying to delve into the past. But, yeah, um, yeah. But I, yeah, I got a bit confused one day. I, I thought that we had some a, a Dutch relative. Okay. Um, and I was contacted by another cousin and asked me about this person. So when I contacted her, I said it was a ditch person. I mis- <laughs> so the spelling got a bit mixed up. So she wrote me up. She said, I've never heard of someone from a country called ditch. <laughs> anyway, enough about, about me. So you, um, as you say, you traveled around a bit and you've been in, in a bit abroad. So when did you get into your profession that you do? Right, I got into my profession um, properly uh, yeah. over twenty, over twenty five years ago. I oh, right. um, did my proper training for herbal, for herbal medicine. So that's what we're herbal seeing behind yeah. there. Um, but interestingly, actually, and I've dug this out because it's like people often ask me, "What? How have you ended up being a herbalist?" And one of my lovely old herbal colleagues, who sadly now died, he did say, "You know." You, you, you can always tell a really good herbalist because it's just like in them. And and if I look back over my years, um, when I was about seven, my sister used to, she's older than me, she used to like to play teachers. And one mm. summer holiday, I've still got, I don't know if you, put, you probably can't see it, but it says, um, it says flowers, nature, trees, stones, oh, wow. uh, um, by Kim Merton. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> and it, Index is an index. <laughs> oh wow! And what lovely there word. is. Oh, look, so look, nice bit of sellotape with a clover in it. <laughs> <laughs> Little did I know that that's one of the first things you have to do when you be, when you study herbal medicine. You do you make a herbarium of, of pressed flowers as well because yep. you know you have to do a lot of plant identification. Yeah. yeah. So it was a four year training, yeah. but. One of the reasons I got, I got into it, you, before I studied it, I was a student doing history of art and mm-hmm. I had, was renting this um, property that had a really tangly garden and I started to weed it and learn about gardening. And I was got some books out of the library and they went, oh, nettles. Nettles used to be used for, and I thought, well, used to be. Um, and that really started me on a journey going, well, if they used to be used, what, you know, does that mean they still can be used? And so mm-hmm. I... I, you know, just sort of had that, um, you know, just a sort of home interest. Mm. And then, you know, I got my degree and went off into the world of work and just thought, I, it's not, you know, something's not quite complete. Mm. And so I kept looking at everything, you know, I'd looked at all the healing modalities like, you know, acupuncture and osteopathy and homeopathy. And, um, but I kept coming back to herbal medicine. Right, okay. And when when I decided I was going to do it, because what I liked, I really liked the hands-on and the you know the the nat- natural element of it, and also the marrying up because you do a lot of medical science with it as well. And I just liked the, that balance really of the art and the science, really, I guess. And so when I told my friends, I go, "This is what I'm going to do," they all went, "Oh, that's so you, Kim," you know. That, <laughs> and I thought, well. Bloody hell, you could have, you know, <laughs> you could have all told me I was not to try to work this out. <laughs> so do you, so you, you actually run this as a business, do you? This is your business? I, it is my business. I mean, it's, um, yeah, I, I like working for myself I and mean, it's not a big, you know, it's not a big fangled machine. And if I really wanted to make lots of money, I'd go into making pills and potions. But I like very much working with people one-on-one and I like and I do grow and make a lot of my medicines now as well mm. so that's just it's just a good wholesome yeah cool cycle really yeah, yeah. so 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 you do you actually go out and, and walk around the woods and, and fields and, and you pick things that you want as well as growing them yourself? I, yes I will do that um so there's certain things that are very easy to kind of grow in the garden and there's other things let's just think what have I like the um, hawthorn berries you know I've mm. just gone and gathered some of those I mean there's no need to grow those in my garden I could just go around and mm. what I really like is um I've got a dog I've got you know and I can walk out into the countryside where I am and um so it's getting to know throughout the 
the year, you know, how things are growing, when they're going to be ready to collect and um, knowing where the good sites are and hopefully no one else is. <laughs> I mean, you don't, you know, I don't take a lot, you know, I'm not one of them. I'm, I'm a bit of a tartar really. I don't like people just going and um, helping themselves to what's really not theirs, but you know, a few berries off a tree really aren't. Going no, to exactly harm. right. But you, 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 you do see in areas where, I don't know, for our, for our private sake, there might be a, a, a load of blackberries or blackberry bushes. But you go there, they start coming out and they're literally stripped bare. Yeah. Everything is gone, you know, yeah. and there's just one or two. And you got to, and what I find sometimes frustrating is because, as you know, I do lots of walking. And we still got to remember that there's creatures and birds out there that need the fruits from these plants to survive on. And if people go out and strip everything, absolutely, there's, there's going to be nothing left for our, for our absolutely. wildlife. Absolutely. Yeah, so I, I mean, I've got, I, I, got to sure. consider all this stuff. No, they don't. They don't. And um, I mean, there used to be a rule of thumb, well, it still should be, that you just take a third of, of anything that you see, because yeah. then you're leaving some, you yeah, know, okay. A, to replenish, to reseed or whatever, and also mm. for the wildlife. Uh, however, Having said that, I mean, that's why I have a bit of a bee in my bonnet about the word foraging, because I I, I I use the word collecting, because yeah. I get into a relationship with knowing what the land's doing, knowing who else is around as far as I can tell, whereas, you know, I'm being a bit judgmental here, but I do see these people come in and sort of just do a blitz on something, and then yeah. they've got no idea, you know, yeah. and how many, maybe sometimes have you asked the landowner, yeah. you know, if it is on someone's land, whether it's okay, you know, we yeah, can't exactly. just assume. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I couldn't agree with you more that it was, um, it can be the in and trendy thing, but it, we've got to be respectful. And that's why Absolutely. also I like the, to grow quite a lot because then I know I'm not taking yeah that, which isn't mine you know yeah, exactly. um, yeah, yeah. you know yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It, when yeah if you, as you say if you see something on that's on the the other side of the boundary um this going back to genealogy again if if there was a somewhere we wanted to go and see and there was some sort of a link between our family and shall we say um I can't remember the name of the place, but it's this big manor house. And I went and knocked on the door to ask them if mm. I could photograph the house, if I could photograph the grounds. I explained the reason why, and they said, not a problem. And they became a little bit more interested then. And then before we left, they actually asked us more questions. Mm. And it's the same sort of thing. If you've got, mm. if you're out looking for, for something that you want to use in for your herbs and you see something the other side of the boundary nine times out of ten if you go and ask mm. they will say yes yeah if you absolutely. just take or go to take then that what within their rights to say hang on no don't. absolutely you know yeah 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 it's, it's what you should do so tell me what are the most common sort of things or is there a is there a common thing that you treat oh that's always like the <laughs> that really tricky question i maintain that 64, 64 million dollar question yeah it is it is um there is i treat human beings mm. and that's what i say i mean i don't i mean that in the, in the very generous sense i'm not being flippant um so people come with all sorts of things and after officially sort of no, since qualifying it's over 20 years now i, I think there people come to you because they like that you know there's many herbalists for as many people as it were in terms of people some people do have a niche thing where they're just specialize in say asthma or something well i'm i'm quite a generalist um so i will come along you know people come along and we go through what their issues are and then we just work work out what they need um, because again it's really seeing someone as the, as their whole and I guess the longer one practices you get used to seeing lots of different sure. um, presentations I mean what I would say is with things like herbal medicine and be, with the complex you know we most of us do get sick at some point in our life uh, sadly um, mm. and some people have very chronic problems so what tends to rock up at the herbalist store is people who've been through a lot of um, you know, lots of <coughs> other medicines and or other practitioners, and we kind of go, oh, God, if only I'd come a bit earlier. 
Um, but yeah, but I work alongside people who are on mainstream medicine as well, and maybe sometimes it's to just to ameliorate some of the side effects of those medicines, or or actually just do, or improve things. So it's a complex picture, is what I'm saying. So There's something you might be able to answer. Now I suffer from a thing you've probably heard of it called nasal drip. Yes, nasal drip. <sighs> And it drives me nuts, and every winter it gets worse. But the only thing that that doctors do is they give you a, a, a nasal spray, right? Yeah. And it's to try and dry it up. But in my case, it doesn't seem to. And in the when I wake up in the morning, it's always worse. Your throat is clang, clagged up, and it's horrible. You got to try and shift mm. it. Mm. But about. And I think this is the way I've worked it out. I've, I've suffered with this for a very long time, but in 2012, I had a nasty accident at work where I'm not going to go through the whole story, but I was going to hop up onto a wall. I lost my footing, catapulted forward, face first, straight into a brick wall. Although they said my nose wasn't broken, evidently inside both nose nostrils, it's a, a real mess. And I think right. it's got worse since then. Yeah. They've said to me I can have surgery if I want it, but I don't particularly want to go down that route. So is this something for a poor suffering bugger like me that's got <laughs> nasal drip? I knew that question was coming, Kevin. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I mean, it, without obviously doing a full consultation on Zoom, which we don't need to do, but... No, that's um, right. You know, but the thing, yes, there are things, and actually there, there's... Um, lots of the aromatic herbs and things that are going to work on the mucous membrane so mm -hmm. you know what i do is, you know i make up a mix specifically for the for um the yeah. person who comes along but you know what i would usually do in that situation is look at look at just to see absolutely you know check if there's any trauma stuff going on and obviously you've got we all have a kind of weak point in our body you know and then i would look at say you know people's diet and just see if there's something there that might be exacerbating and then i would make you know we'd all talk through that and then yeah, sure. the herbs, but things like you know in for something like you something quite warming and um sort of the, the, the volatile oils things like thyme or you know ginger all these things that are just going to really keep the circulation because around here as you can imagine it's quite tricky to get the medicine delivered to that point so um so things that are going to get get things moving around in your circulation and also we've got a bit mimsy whimsy i think in a in a way that um and forgetting these things where you do sting inhalations and things mm. because that gets immediate contact with the mucous membrane so um but yeah i'd maybe start with you know, just chuck some more things like thyme and oregano and um rosemary in your cooking for example right. that might yeah. that might be a start to mm. just help help break down the mucus it's, it's interesting you said about the steam because if ever i get a head cold and touch wood he says looking for a bit of wood um, I don't get that many. When I do, the first thing that comes out is a glass bowl and hot Good. water and steam. Towel over, because Good. that's what my mum always made me and my brother do. <laughs> yes, and yes. We, we used to moan like hell about it, but we, that's the first thing I go for. It's, yeah. it's just certain things that you, you can remember from your mum making you do as a kid you didn't want to do, but it sticks with you. But it, you're right, it does tend to, to, to work. It does clear yeah. you a bit. Yeah, yeah. Just sometimes the simplest things are the best, and slowing things down. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Slowing things down now on my allotment. Cynthia Ward has been helping me on my allotment because she loves gardening, and she said to me last weekend, I think it is. She said the problem is with you, Kevin. She said you've got one speed, and that's flat out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the way I am at work. You know, I go, I tend to start work with my, because I'm a painter and decorator. I don't know if you knew that or not, but. No, I do, um, I do, yeah. Uh, I, um, I tend to start work, most of my work's local. I start about half, half eight. But I barely stop during the day. I'll have five minutes, 10 minutes, at about 10 o'clock and about the same at lunchtime. And I just work flat out all the time. But I'm 60, nearly 67. Um, and. I come home, I, I tend to work about, leave work about half three, four. I come home and, and I run a bath and I'm absolutely whacked <laughs> out. And then I think I've got to get out, got to get out of this bath and cook the meal because I'm on my own. 
and uh, but I'm just exhausted at the end of the day. <laughs> Up here, I think I'm 30. Yeah, well, that's I think a lot of us suffer from that, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> but you're a lot younger than me, kid. You're a lot well, younger than me, so. <laughs> well, I'm nearer 60 than you think, Kevin. <laughs> Are you really? You certainly don't look it. You don't look it at all. But uh, yeah, but it's like uh, my 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 mum is um who's in her 80s. She goes, well, it's very tedious getting older. You know, you have to sort of do all these things before you can get going in the morning. So. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, to, today actually would have is a, is. I'm glad we're doing this today. You, you and I are doing this because it would have been my mum's 91st birthday. Wow. And whenever it comes round to anniversaries, um, anybody that knows me very well, especially with anniversaries to do with my mum and dad, um, I struggle. I struggle. Mm. It's, it's a very emotional mm. time for me. So mm. I try to keep myself busy so that mm. I'm not sitting around thinking too much mm. about mum or about dad or something like that. Because if I, if I, if I do, then I just, I'm just hopeless for the rest of the day. So I've been very busy today. So been busy. Yeah. yeah. But you know, we'll remember your mum though. You know, it's oh, she was a diamond. Know. She was yeah. superb. You know, anybody that met her fell in love with her. Um, when she was, I think it was 1990, oh gosh, now I've got to think, 1998, she was diagnosed with a very rare cancer, which was behind, the, in the saliva gland, behind the jaw. Oh, yeah. So all the jaw had to come out. Yeah, grim. She hadn't been able to eat properly for some time before, and they put it down to originally arthritis. Um, so the jaw had to be taken out so they could get to the saliva gland. Um, then she had to have another operation later on for a bit of reconstruction. So they took a bone out of her leg to put into her face because all mm -hmm. this side of the face just dropped. Initially, she, was, she wasn't keen to go out because she was worried about people looking at her. But in the end, you know, with encouragement and that from, from her dad and herself, and we used to take her out, she became much better. Um, but she, every, everybody said, you know, he, you know she, unfortunately, she passed away because she had taken her trolley, a wheeled trolley, back into the kitchen and she dropped a straw because she could only drink stuff mm. through a straw. And she bent down to pick it over with a hand on the trolley and the trolley rolled away and she fell and broke oh. her hip. Yeah. The hospital the hip, hip replacement, yeah. pneumonia. Um, yeah. And sadly, that's, a, that's what happens to a lot of people. Yes, it does, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, but everybody said that, that new mum, she always had this twinkle in her eye. She is yeah. sort of like a naughty twinkle, you know. <laughs> well, she was, she was, you might, you might have know. a twinkle in your eye too. <laughs> Some people have said so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I try and keep that covered up with dark glasses. Why can't I put them on <laughs> So, oh, where, so let's, let's get back to yourself. So, yeah. What, um, tell us a bit about your family. What family have you got? Well, I've got um, I've got two children. I'm, yep. I'm, I'm blessed to have um, late, I've done it. I've done all my things late in life. So I've got um, a seventeen and a seventeen and a half year old boy, and mm. a fifteen and a half year old girl who. Um, okay. Yeah. So that was quite busy. late on. Yeah, it was quite late on. Sadly, my husband he died five years ago. Um, oh, I'm sorry. But I do have. Uh, my I'm in the same road, so we're doing the old ways, just just by the lap of the gods, really. So my sister is along the road, and my mum's mm -hmm. along the road. So oh, excellent! Really lovely to have them good, around. Good. Um, so you got family yeah. close by. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Absolutely. Excellent. Yeah. 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 So you so um, you've told you told me in a message the other day or a phone call the other day that you've got some builders in. Oh uh, yeah. Well, they were now strange this. They were supposed to start in May, but something got in the way. <laughs> so I've got them now. Yeah. I, I, they're, they're lovely. They tidy up after themselves at the end of each day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we are a bit behind schedule. All <laughs> oh, right. And what are they doing for you? Um, um, yeah. I'm having a extension, the pushing out the ground floor. So I get a bigger kitchen, a downstairs loo, which is, you know, <laughs> so that would be brilliant. And then we, at the moment, we've got a teeny tiny bathroom that you, you can't swing a cat. cat in the right. It's got like yeah. a shower and a 
tiny sink. Um, so we're going to have a family bathroom, which will be lovely. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. yeah. Well, when I bought this place um, in 2011, I think it was, early 2011, it hadn't had anything done to it since 1974 when it was built. Oh, great. Was it all mauve and orange? Pink. It was all pink. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a, a bungalow. And uh, uh, so I came into it and looked at it with my, with my son, James, who's 38. Um, and my best pal Steve and we had a look around and we thought hmm we could do a lot of work with this I'll try and get planning permission for a loft conversion for a couple of bedrooms and a bathroom Steve being a project manager and a, and a quantity surveyor he phoned me up the day I think it was the day after my mortgage and my price had been accepted um, he phoned me up. He said, Kev, just down the road from the house you're building, you, you, you bought, they're doing a loft conversion exactly like we've been talking about. And I said, oh, wow. I said, I'll go down the road and, and ask them if I can have a look at the plans. And I said, what number is it? He said, number 40. And I said, Steve, that's not down the road. He said, well, where is it in then? I said, that's the one I've bought. <laughs> and a builder had been trying to buy this place for about a year. <laughs> and it had permission to bring architects round. Uh, they submitted the plans. The yeah. plans were passed. So I bought this property with planning permission on it. Perfect. Which has saved, Perfect. saved me a lot of money. Yes. So the loft conversion was done. Um, and I love it here. You know, it's, it's, it's everything I need. You know, the kitchen's yeah. tiny. The kitchen's tiny. But I've kept the downstairs loo, <laughs> which was there. Very and cool. the old and the old bathroom is now my utility room, so I've yeah. got everything. You know, two bedrooms yeah. upstairs, but the the back room, which is a, a second a second reception room or or another bedroom if I want it. So yeah, yeah I'm very happy, very happy. Here. But uh, I don't yeah. like being on my own. Don't like it at all. But, no. Uh, well, it's not natural, is it? It's not natural, really, for us. No, no, it's not really. Um, you know, I come home from work, so especially when it's getting dark at night, you know, it's, and it, this time of year, and I walk through the front door, and I just sort of, oh, God, the house is empty. It's, and, it's, and I get a little bit down about it sometimes. Yeah. So I might Jim have to go and get, I might have <laughs> get some of your, 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 your medicine. To <laughs> pick me up I, a thought bit. You, I thought you were going to take teenager off my hand, actually. No. <laughs> I've got enough trouble with a 40-year-old and a 38-year-old. I don't want teenagers as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, dear. Um, yeah. Anyway, Kim, mm -hmm. I don't know where we are time-wise. We've been... I can't even... Oh, hang on. No. Oh, there we go. Uh, I can't technology. even see. Technology is great, and it doesn't tell me how long we've been... Hang on. on. I can look oh, just over, over half an hour. Here. We've done half an hour, yes. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. But I'll tell you what then, Kim, let's leave it there because that's super. Um, so I will say, and, you know, and th th this is where the problem comes in. Whenever I say goodbye to somebody, I've got to try and find out how to switch this thing off. <laughs> but Kim, look, no, add, adds to the comedy, don't worry. I know, it's brilliant. I love it. <laughs> but I've done these chats now. I've with Andrew Norris, I did first. Yes. Um, then Jeff Kellison. Yep. Um, Gabriel's chat should have gone live this afternoon um, and now yours it's brilliant I've loved doing them it's, it just brings us something a little bit different um, than doing my normal walks and things like that so it's great yeah. I really really appreciate your time oh well, um, thank, thanks for asking it's oh no it's not a problem I've loved it oh Andrew Norris was a, said speak to Kim <laughs> <laughs> she will talk to anyone <laughs> <laughs> But we'll do this again at another time, and you know, when perhaps when you've you've be, you know you've moved into your own clinic and everything else, and you've moved everything, all the kids out and stuff like that. <laughs> but Kim, look, thanks very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Take care of yourself, and we'll we'll, we'll catch up soon. Yeah, I do hope so. I hope we get to do another walk or something in real real life, you know. Yes, back to back to reality, so shall we yeah, say. Yeah. Normal, normal and all of that. Yeah, that's it, yeah. All right, Kim, take care. All right. I'll see Bye. you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Kevin.